So this was a great up-tempo training shoe that you could take for races. And I did. And this was a great up-tempo training shoe that you could take for races. And I did. Now this. Maybe? Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. My name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. And yes, today we are talking all about the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. I promised I was gonna make a review on this shoe and it has been a long time coming. Now I've only got a little bit over 200 miles in this shoe, but that's certainly enough for me to do a full review. So we're gonna talk about the upper, the midsole, and the outsole in a second. But first, first I want to take a little bit of a trip down memory lane because the Saucony Endorphin Speed was the original speed shoe that I got. I haven't been running for that long, and in fact, the first race I ever ran was a marathon, and I ran it in this shoe. Now, when I bought this shoe, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 had just come out, so I bought this on big discount, and I had released a video at the time, early on in my YouTube running days, where I talked about whether I wasn't even sure whether having something with a plate, even though it's a nylon plate, made sense for me, having a light speedy shoe, whether that made sense for me, especially running a distance like a marathon, and I really wasn't convinced. And then just a few weeks before that race, I went out and did one of my last long runs where I did most of that run in the Saucony Triumph 19. Um, when you've got a size 13 foot, Saucony Triumph 19, although very protective, and I owe a lot to that shoe carrying me through my first marathon training block, it's a big shoe. I ran most of that long run in that shoe, last 10 kilometers, threw this on, and immediately, I remember that run so vividly, just how much lighter and snappier, just amazing this felt on foot. And so this is what I ran the marathon in. It carried me through, felt great. All 42.2 kilometers of that run felt incredible. That carried me through my first marathon. The Endorphin Speed 2, I did use for some races. Uh, I've got less use out of this shoe, not because I didn't like it, just because I started to get more and more shoes into my rotation, more shoes I wanted to try out, but I did get my half marathon PB in this shoe. Now the Speed 1 and the Speed 2 are very similar. If you look at those shoes, the upper, the midsole, and the outsole, they're very similar, minor tweaks, just like a lot of companies do. The third iteration of this shoe, like a lot of other brands, I'm thinking of Nova Blast 1 versus now the Nova Blast 4. I'm thinking of Rebel V1 versus Rebel V4 now. A lot of the shoes have gone from a little bit more racy, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more wild, to a little bit more stable, a little bit more relaxed, leaning a little bit more towards that standard daily trainer. And that's what I think has happened with the Endorphin Speed 3. Now we are going to go through the upper, the midsole, and the outsole, then I'm going to tell you whether I feel like this was worth my hard-earned cash and where it fits into my rotation. But we are going to start with this upper, and this upper is a mesh upper. They did widen the toe box over the 1 and the 2, and it does feel very, very comfortable. There's lots of protection. It's very stiff back here in the heel. They've got this little seashell kind of thing happening there. So it's very stiff back there, very protective. There's a good amount of padding around this heel collar. The laces on the version of the shoe that I got, I really like these laces. Some of the early versions of the Speed 3, the laces were pretty stretchy, made it a little bit even harder to get a lockdown. Oh, and the tongue. The tongue is pretty good as well. You're not gonna be able to see that on camera, but not much padding, but still protective enough where it, you don't get any lace bite or anything like that. So great job on the tongue. Where I have the problem, and I've been playing with it and stretching it, but I really have to cinch down here to try to get a good lockdown. Because as I mentioned, I the Speed Series, I've been trying to use as Speed Day shoes. So when I use a Speed Day shoe, and the one I've been using most lately hasn't been this shoe, it's actually been the Boston 12. And we're gonna do a comparison in another video between these two shoes. But in the Boston 12, that upper is less relaxed, and a lot of people have problems with Adidas uppers, but that upper is less relaxed, it's more coarse, it's more stiff. What that means is it's more fiddly to get a good lockdown, it's harder to get a good lockdown, but once you get locked in, you are locked in on that platform. I really, really love that about Adidas shoes. Some people don't like the uppers. I had some issues at first, but in the end, really love that because of the lockdown, just, if you get it right, it's great. This one, it's just a little bit more relaxed. Feels great as a daily trainer, but when I'm picking up the pace, I want something a little bit stiffer, a little bit narrower, a little bit less relaxed. 
a little bit more like the Speed 1. All right, now let's move on to the midsole of this shoe. They are still using the Power Run PB, and we do have uh, 36 millimeters in the heel and 28 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop in this shoe. And we are looking at a nylon plate that runs through the middle of this, and it is an S-curve nylon plate. And they did add in the Speed 3, they added some wings to this to add, try to add to some stability of the shoe. Interesting thing, at least in my opinion, on that in a sec. And then they did widen the base on this a bit. So it feels softer than the Speed 1 and Speed 2 to me. It does feel softer. It does feel more comfortable. But when I'm on those longer runs, when I'm running up on my toe, when I'm running hard, eventually it does start to bottom out in the Speed 3 for me. So I don't get that same, uh, that same energy return that I get out of the Speed 1 and Speed 2. Eventually it just, I lose that in the Speed 3. So longer runs where I've got some marathon pace. A lot of my marathon workouts, when I get into those longer runs there, I'll do maybe two hours easy, and then I'll throw in maybe half an hour of marathon pace towards the end of that run. This shoe would not be great for that for me because I feel like by the end of that run, I'm not getting the same return as I am out of some other shoes. But overall, that midsole is very comfortable. Again, it feels a little bit more like a daily trainer. It's not that stiff, that nylon plate is not overly stiff, but you do get a good amount of energy return. It's just not that stiff. It's nowhere as near like a carbon fiber plate. This is where one of the things that it's interesting for me is that I don't feel that this shoe is stable as the Speed 1 and the Speed 2. And I think for me, the reason why I get that sensation is because I'm not locked in as much when I'm running at harder paces. I just don't feel as locked into the entire platform. Stability, yes, it is wider. You do have that wing plate. I just don't feel as locked in. Using that word a lot, but that's what I want out of a speed day shoe. So overall, again, it's a great daily trainer, really comfortable, probably more comfortable than the first two iterations of this, but not as good for speed days. Now, let's move on to the outsole, and this XT900 rubber, now this is where a lot of Saucony shoes for me shine, and it's in, it's in the durability of this rubber. It's not in the traction. I would say I like the Continental rubber, and I like the Puma grip better when it comes to traction than, uh, than anything that comes from Saucony for sure, but the durability of this is, is really, really good. I'll, it's, I'll just hold that up there again. I, a little bit over 200 miles in this, and you're really not seeing anything at all. So this, this thing feels like it's gonna go forever in terms of wear and tear on that, on that outsole. Now, once we take into account that it's a comfortable upper, comfortable midsole, decent outsole, this shoe fits into my rotation as, as a daily trainer that leans towards up-tempo, but it's a little bit too relaxed for me to take on any big, hard workouts. And as I get further into my marathon training block, I'm struggling to see where I want to fit this shoe into my rotation. It's not gonna be my recovery day shoe. It's not gonna be my stable daily trainer. And it's not gonna be my long run shoe. And it's not gonna be my workout shoe. And it's not gonna be my race day shoe. So I'm still gonna take it out every once in a while. I'm still gonna get some more miles in it, but I do struggle to figure out where it fits into my rotation. So do I feel like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is worth my hard earned cash? I'm still gonna say yes, because it is a fun shoe. It is fun to take out. If you've got a big rotation with a lot of other shoes, in my mind, it's hard to figure out exactly where you'd fit this shoe. That's it guys, that has been my review of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. My name is Matt and this is what matters to Matt and ultimately what matters to me most is my family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Step one, wake up brother gonna rise in the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.